Sorry for that interruption. I got a phone call and I don't know how to keep doing YouTube on my phone when I get a phone call. So, here's part two of the video. I'll continue reading uh, where we left off. Four o'clock, she reminded me, as if it were any other day. I was stunned, as though she were asking me to go through the talent show torture again. I planted myself more squarely in front of the TV. You know, a huge act of defiance there. I'm going to sit in front of the TV. Turn off TV, she called from the kitchen five minutes later. I didn't budge. And then I decided I didn't have to do what Mother said anymore. I wasn't her slave. This wasn't China. Three word sentence, huge sentence right there. This wasn't China. That means significantly different things to the daughter than it does to the mother. I had listened to her before and look what happened. She was a stupid one. She came out of the kitchen and stood in the arched entryway of the living room. Four o'clock, she said once again louder. I'm not going to play anymore, I said nonchalantly. Why should I? I'm not a genius. She stood in front of the TV. I saw that her chest was heaving up and down in an angry way. No, I said, and now felt stronger, as if my true self had finally emerged. So this was what had been inside me all along. No, I won't, I screamed. She snapped off the TV, yanked me by the arm, and pulled me off the floor. She was frighteningly strong, half pulling, half carrying me toward the piano as I kicked the thrown rugs under my feet. We have here a physical battle to go with the emotional and mental battle within both of them. She lifted me up hard onto the bench. I was sobbing by now, looking at her bitterly. Her chest was heaving even more and her mouth was open, smiling crazily as if she were pleased that I was crying. You want me to be something that I'm not, I sobbed. I'll never be the kind of daughter you want me to be. And now we get the reference to the title. Only two kinds of daughters, she shouted, in Chinese. Those who are obedient and those who follow your, their own mind. Only one kind of daughter can live in this house. Obedient daughter. Then I wish I weren't your daughter. I wish you weren't my mother, I shouted. As I said these things, I got scared. It felt like worms and toads and slimy things crawling out of my chest, but it also felt good. In this battle, what a complex response. It felt awful and good for this defiance. This awful side of me had surfaced at last. Too late to change this, my mother answered. My mother said shrilly, and I could sense her anger rising to its breaking point. I wanted to see it spill over. And that's when I remembered the babies she had lost in China, the ones we never talked about. Then I wish I'd never been born, I shouted. I wish I were dead, like them. It was as if I had said magic words. Alakazam! Her face went blank, her mouth closed, her arms went slack, and she backed out of the room, stunned, as if she were blowing away like a small brown leaf, thin, brittle, and lifeless. Such a huge climax. I mean, so much going on there, and you see the, the conflict build, both the internal and the external. You see so much of the thematic material, the, the battle between cultures, the battle between generations. Uh, you see their, their tie to each other emotionally and how much each other affects how the other one feels. Uh, it's just such an intense climax. Uh, and then one other spot I wanted to look at, still on page five, um, I had just a sentence that really stood out. Uh, right after the space break, uh, the narrator says, unlike my mother, I did not believe I could be anything I wanted to be. I could only be me. I did not believe I could be anything I wanted to be. I could only be me. That is such an American phrase. It's just me being me. I can only be me. Be true to yourself. To, to paraphrase Hamlet, this above all, to thine own self be true. Uh, we champion this idea in America. Uh, this is who I am. Em em embrace me for being me. And, and, and I think it's worth reflecting on individually. Is this idea worth championing? Obviously, the daughter who's been Americanized says, let me be me. And the mother, from a completely different perspective, is I absolutely do not want to let you just be you. Because most people, left to their own devices, their, their own motivation, unpushed, really don't become anything. Uh, 
And the mother has one vision of success for her daughter, and she realizes if you are just who you are, you're never going to reach that success. And so it's just, it's a great matter of personal reflection, uh, particularly regarding American culture. Is this idea worth championing? I can only be me. Is that what we should want? To just be ourselves? Or should we want other people in our lives pushing us to be more than that? Um, I know in this, with, with a family involved, it's, it's so much more complex than that, but uh, that certainly matters within this. Um, in terms of other AP terms, there's so many uh, literary devices in this, a lot of similes. You see that on page two and three, her description of the piano teacher and his mother. Um, you know, the, the old Lady Chong smelled uh, like a baby that had done something in its pants. Quite a descriptive simile there. Um, her fingers were like a dead person's, like an old peach. Um, he had marched stiffly uh, like an obedient little soldier. Uh, that's one of the uh, author strategies used here to, to show some complexity. Um, and then you get the, the grand conclusion. Uh, if we're going to talk structure, we go back to some, some more of the title, Two Kinds. Uh, but now it's the two halves of the piano recital. Um, you get brought back up to present time um, where we see her reflecting on how both pleading child and perfectly contented are two sides of the same piece. Uh, and that's speaking to her about her life. Um, we don't get a great reconciliation here. We don't get some sort of statement that she completely understood her mother or that she ended up being successful. Um, there really isn't a, a moral, as, as we've talked about multiple times, um, but just this complexity, uh, this battle between generations and, and cultures and, and where they're both coming from. Um, so not sure what you saw in the short story. I'd love to hear your commentary. I'd love for you to write about your commentary, um, particularly you know, what, what is your own battle here? Uh, some of you have an intergenerational battle with your parents. Uh, some of you have an intercultural battle with your parents with an idea that they're holding on to a, a culture from another place and, and you've become somewhat Americanized and, and what that means and how that affects you. Um, so uh, there are perspectives in this that I would love to hear from you about. Uh, and hopefully you've done some thinking about the perspective you bring to this story and how that affects how you read it and, and which character you sympathize with. Uh, so those are just some of my thoughts on Two Kinds by Amy Tan. Uh, hopefully you found them productive.